Well, good morning. A very warm welcome to you on this first Sunday in July. Just to let you know, uh, of course, some churches are opening at this point. Um, and I know some of you are wondering when we will be open. My letter of last week, I said that we have a provisional date of the 6th of September. Uh, we've been encouraged not to rush into opening. So there is a small group that are working hard to make sure that when we do open, uh, everything is safe uh, for us to do so. So uh, even though we're not uh, rushing back, we do want to be back together. And I look forward to the time when we can be uh, together in the church building itself. But for the time being, we still uh, gather in this way. Hopefully you're enjoying the songs that have been uh, chosen week by week and are gaining something from God's word. Well, we're going to listen to our pre-service song, which is called, I'm No Longer a Slave. And so let's uh, listen to this song together. If you know it, please do join in, or just let the words uh, speak to you uh, before we sing, uh, before we uh, begin our service. So, uh, Let's listen to this song together. We start our service with these words from Psalm 56. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? Wonderful words from the psalmist as we begin our service. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we come to you because you first came to us in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. We praise you for your great rescue that has set us free in Christ. We confess that at times we still live in fear and have forgotten your wonderful acts, not just what you did so long ago, but what you've done in our own lives. Forgive us and set us free from fear that we might live as your children, free and joyful. Amen. We sing our opening song together, Thank You For Saving Me. Let's sing this with joy in our hearts. Well, now we turn to God's word, um, which Mike's gonna bring to us from Acts chapter 12. Uh, do open your heart to hear what the Lord would say to you as Mike reads this to us now. Over to you, Mike. Thank you, Mark. On that very night before Herod was going to bring him out for trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the prison cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt, put on your sandals. Peter did so. Then the angel said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize what was happening through the angel was real, but he thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and second guards, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went outside and walked down one narrow street, when at once the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from everything the Jewish people were expecting to happen. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Mike, for that. Also, if I can say at this point, uh, thank you to Dave Blake for choosing our music today. Uh, hopefully you are enjoying it as much as I am. On the night of the 24th of March, 1944, there was the largest attempted escape during World War II. Allied prisoners broke out of a Nazi detention camp, Stalag Luft III, deep in Nazi-occupied Poland. This event was immortalised in the 1963 film The Great Escape. Well, our reading this morning was about another great escape. But rather than being a mass breakout, it was the escape of just one man, Peter. Now, we've been going through the Book of Acts since Easter. I don't know if you've been aware of that. And as the first half of the Book of Acts comes to a close, we still see Herod trying to get rid of the group that acknowledges Jesus as the King of the Jews. Herod had been persecuting the church and had had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. As this pleased the Jews, Herod had Peter arrested and put in prison, typical politician. But Peter was next on the hit list. Even though Herod locked Peter up, the Bible tells us in verse 5, just before our reading, that the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Wonderful little phrase there that I'm going to come back to. Now, even though Peter was heavily guarded by uh, 16 soldiers, two of which were on either side of Peter as he slept, and even though Peter was bound with chains, what we do know is that God is more powerful than chains, more mighty than a whole squadron of soldiers. Sending an angel to Peter, the chain simply fell off, and Peter walked out of the prison. Peter didn't really know what was going on, and thought it was a vision. But led uh, by the angel past the guards, Peter was freed and went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many of the church had gathered to pray for his release. It's a wonderful story, and we've only done part of it, so if you want to read the rest of it, um, then please do so. It's great what happens after. But by the grace of God, and by the prayers of the church, their prayers were answered, and Peter was freed. If you've ever wondered whether our prayers are effective, let me tell you a similar story from the 20th century that will hopefully encourage you. It's a story taken from this book called The Heavenly Man by Brother Yun. I've referred to it uh, on a few occasions in the past. Well, Chinese church leader Brother Yun had travelled from Henan province in central China where he lived to a neighbouring uh, province of Shaanxi. He went there to strengthen the believers and to encourage them with biblical teaching. But while he was there, he was arrested by the secret police. They tied him up and beat him badly. They tied a cross to his back and paraded him around the streets, mocking him. He was continually beaten, black and blue, during this time. Then he was taken to an interrogation room with an iron door and iron bars. After being interrogated by the secret police, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said these words, the God of Peter is your God. Then he remembered the story that we've heard this morning and how an angel was sent to Peter 
and how Peter walked right out of the prison. Suddenly, the rope that bound Brother Yun snapped. He held on to the rope and just walked out of the interrogation room. He walked through a, car a courtyard where there were onlookers. And it was as though God had blinded their eyes from seeing him. He just walked straight through. As the front gate was locked, the only way out was over an eight foot high wall. He stopped and prayed, then hauled himself as high as he could. On the other side of the wall was a septic tank, 10 feet wide. And this is what Brother Yun writes in his book. As I hung grimly onto the side of the wall, all of a sudden, I felt as if somebody hoisted me up and threw me over. I jumped so far that I even cleared the septic tank. Good job. He said, a scripture came to my mind from 2 Samuel 22 verse 30. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my guard, I can scale a wall. The God of Peter helped him out of prison. He ran as fast as he could. And as he ran, he thanked God. And after several hours, he crossed two mountains and a river. Then in the darkness of night, he heard someone call his name. Brother Yun, where are you going? The man in the darkness was a farmer who just happened to have been at the house early that day, listening to Brother Yun. This farmer had left moments before the secret police had arrived and was now back in his fields. He was there at night because he had to catch up with the work that he hadn't done during the day because he'd gone to listen to Brother Yun. Yun asked the farmer to take him back to the house where he'd been preaching. The farmer said, no, let me help you escape. But Brother Yun was insistent. And so, after a long journey back, they arrived at the house where Yun had been early that morning. And they heard, him and the farmer, heard the people praying loudly, crying for the Lord, for Brother Yun's release. When Yun walked into the room, they could scarcely believe it. It was just like the story of Peter. Then he taught them some more before he left. And he said these words that we read in Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. When Yun returned home, he met with his wife and another church leader who said to him, A few days ago, during our prayer meeting, your wife had a vision. A voice said, Yun has been arrested in Shanxi. He needs a great miracle to get him out. And so we told the church and everyone immediately fasted and prayed for you. What we have here in both stories is the power of the authorities, Herod in Peter's, Peter's day, and the Chinese secret police in Brother Yun's day in the late 20th century. Yet God sent an angel in both instances to release Peter and then Yun. As Hebrews 1.14 reminds us, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? These angels were sent because the church was earnestly praying. And the church turned to prayer. In both situations, miracles happened. We read these words in 2 Chronicles 7. If my people, 
who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to their prayers offered in this place. If my people. If my people. We are that people. And it's a question of whether we will humble ourselves and pray and seek the Lord's face and turn from our wicked ways. Because then God promises to heal our land, forgive our sins and hear from heaven. You now often we can feel powerless. The coronavirus, we don't know where it is and what it's going to do and we are afraid. Many people feel powerless at this pandemic time. But we possess the only power that the powerless have, which is the power of prayer. Don't complain that the doors of the church are shut. Give thanks that through this pandemic, God is opening the doors to people's hearts. Those are more important doors in life. We are called to be a church like the church in the book of Acts, where miracles happen, where lives are changed, where God's people give all they have. Because as it says in Revelation 12, 11, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In other words, they will give everything. I wonder if you remember how it was for you when you first came to the Lord. The excitement, the joy, the love. And today I ask, where has your love gone? Have you allowed fear to replace that love? Why do we let fear in? Why do we do it? Why do we live as the world wants us to live? You know, we need to pray and ask the Lord for miracles in our time. It's wonderful to hear God's word and to hear stories about people like Brother Yun. What about us today? What about us being able to tell stories about how God has released people from fear? Fear of the pandemic, fear of death, fear just in general. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. Just as the church prayed for Brother Yun and they got a miracle. Just as the early church prayed for Peter and got a miracle. Will we pray? If we do, I believe that we will see miracles in our day. We will see people released from fear. We will see people released so that they can know the salvation of our God. So, let's ask the Lord, what can I do now? Who can I pray for? Lord, is there any fear in me that has taken hold? Lord, would you replace it with your wonderful love? For scripture says, perfect love drives out all fear. That is God's word to us today. Perfect love drives out all fear. So let's come to the Lord in prayer and not let fear rule our lives. 
let's be free and joyful and free to tell what God has done both in the past and today not only in our lives but the lives of other Christians let's pray mighty God you are still at work bringing release to captives hope to the hopeless Lord set us free to walk in the freedom that you have won for us in Jesus name Amen we are going to sing uh, a wonderful song together the great uh, the great hymn which I think came up as the most popular hymn ever uh, in in surveys which is amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me we're going to sing the version by Chris Tomlin that says my chains are gone I've been set free may that be the truth in your life as you sing this and if you are still a slave to fear may that fear like the the rope that bound brother Yun or the chains that bound Peter as you sing this song may the chains of fear fall from your life and know that you are set free so let's sing this amazing grace how sweet the sound my chains are gone we come now after that wonderful hymn we come now in prayer let us pray gracious lord we pray for those across the world who are imprisoned for their faith like brother yun help them to hold on to their faith despite their circumstances and encourage them as you encouraged peter and Yun. Lord, we pray for the city of Leicester and its outbreak of coronavirus. We pray for health officials as they seek to contain the outbreak. We pray for residents as they live with the worry of this time, for businesses as they struggle to survive. And we also pray for the response of the churches that your grace and mercy may shine through. Lord, we pray for evangelists across the world at this time, sharing the good news of Jesus with others in this troubled time. May hearts be open to your truth in Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray for open doors here in both Thorpe and in the city of Norwich, that there may be an open door for your message in people's hearts. Just as we pray for individuals that we may know. We also pray for Irene Plummer in hospital. And we pray for her recovery and well-being that she may be able to return home. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves and those whom we love, that whatever we are facing, that we may know the truth, that you are bigger than any enemy, any health scare, any money worry, any job loss. You are able to do more than we can possibly ask or imagine. Lord, where we are imprisoned by fear, release us in your love for your glory's sake. Amen. And we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our closing hymn together, another great hymn. And can it be? Let's sing this with joy in our hearts. Well, having sung that great hymn, let's now close in prayer. Let's pray. God, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ, you've shown us freedom, truth and love. May we walk in freedom and without fear. May we believe your truth and discard the devil's lies. May we hold fast to your love that all may know you are the Lord of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you this week, that you may walk without fear in perfect love. The Lord bless you.